I'm Bruce Gordon, author of the book, The Spirit of Attack. Throughout the Cold War, we lived with a threat of a volley of Russian nuclear ballistic missiles being fired at our air bases to destroy our planes on the ground. This would be followed up some many hours later by a conventional bomber attack. To get our fighters off the ground so they couldn't be wiped out on the ground and airborne, within the 30 minutes that we expected to have in warning, we developed the concept of flush. To flush our planes off the ground, we had the code words, missile warning flush. We were told those words would never be used except in the case of an actual attack. If we heard those words, it was not training, it was the real thing. In 1968, I was an F-106 fighter pilot based at Selfridge Air Force Base in Michigan, just north of Detroit. This was a training day. All our planes were taken off alert. The maintenance men were going to do loading exercises and other tests for their maintenance crews, and all the pilots went into the squadron operations room where we got lectures and we took tests for our training programs. I was taking a test when suddenly the loudspeaker blared, missile warning flush. We all jumped up. We knew this could not be a test. This was the real thing. Normally, we would wait for maintenance. We would call into maintenance and have them tell us what plane would go to which pilot and exactly where the plane was located, but this was an emergency. We ran to the personal equipment room, grabbed our parachutes and helmets, and ran out to the ramp where there were many F-106s parked. I ran to the first F-106. There were some maintenance men working there, and I said, get out of the way, we're going to take off. And they said, but, 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 but. And I ran up the ladder and looked in the cockpit and there was no seat in the plane. No seat. I couldn't, I could not fly a plane with no seat, no radio, no nothing. I couldn't do it. I climbed back down the ladder and walked back just completely buffaloed by what had happened, and the loudspeaker for the base said to come back, it was all a mistake. We came back to the squadron, and I began to wonder what went wrong. I called over to maintenance and asked what had happened. Well, all the in-commission aircraft had been taken out to the alert hangar some distance away, where the maintenance people were doing nuclear uploads. The only planes that were near to squadron operations were the planes that weren't in commission and could not be flown. I never found out the cause of this false missile warning flush, but we all learned a lesson from it. Even in the most trying conditions, stop and think for a moment. Our aircraft were at the alert hangar. If we had called maintenance, we could have got into line taxis and gone out to the alert hangar and scrambled our planes and got off the ground in less than 30 minutes. By rushing out to the planes, we had rushed out to the airplanes that were not in commission and could not have flown. We would have been wiped out on the ground. I learned that having the spirit of attack and be willing to take off and fly anything at any time doesn't make up for thinking about the situation before you act. There were several false missile warning flushes called during the Cold War, and sometimes we got airplanes airborne. Airplanes could be scrambled on the warning while we still had 30 minutes to go, but missiles, our ballistic missiles hidden in our silos, 
could not be fired until the first Russian missiles hit, confirming that this was a real attack. For that reason, aircraft are less vulnerable to a ballistic missile attack than missiles are. 